Today we're going to do a bit of time traveling and learn to hack like it's 1987 on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Actual time travel machines have not been invented yet. Surprise, surprise. But we are able to go back and play games in simulated 1980s and 1990s environments. In particular, today we're looking at Telehack, which simulates ARPNET and Usenet in the 1980s mostly and into the early 1990s. Now it's a really fun game, particularly because it supports multiple users. So it's not just an isolated RPG kind of game where you're playing with yourself. You can actually interact with other people playing in the same environment, which gives it a more realistic feel to what you would have had if you did live and hack in the 1980s. And in fact, it's important to remember that these, these were the Wild West days of computer hacking. 1980s was when personal computers were first becoming a thing, and it wasn't even until 1986 when hacking even became a federal crime. And you gotta imagine that hacking back then was much simpler than it was today because security wasn't the first thought on everyone's mind. So a hack back then could involve getting an actual phone, dialing up a number, setting it on your modem, and then changing a file name or just logging in the guest user account that would be on the computer. Now, if any of this kind of environment sounds interesting to you, or maybe you're new to Linux and you just wanna learn some basics and have fun while you're doing it, then you definitely should check out Telehack. And you can get a better historical context if you watch a documentary like the KGB, The Computer and Me, which is linked in the article in the description below. Now, if you're ready to get started, all you'll need is internet access to access the Telenet website and a computer uh, that supports Telnet, SSH, or just a common web browser if neither of those work for you. If you're ready, let's get started. All right, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pull up Telehack and access it somehow. Now, there's a variety of ways you can do this. The easiest way is to just pull up telehack.com in a web browser and you'll be greeted with this pretty little terminal. However, if you want a more authentic feel, you could certainly Telnet into Telehack. Although using Telnet on a Windows machine is gonna leave it potentially vulnerable, so if you want something slightly more secure, you could also SSH in. Now you can find the IPs and port numbers and all that in the article linked in the description below. But for my purposes today, I'm just gonna use the web browser version because it's the most convenient and easy to access. Now, as you can see, we are just greeted with this welcome page. We're not signed in or anything like that. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a user account. Now, when you're creating this user account, the only thing you need to do is type in new user. Then it's gonna ask us some age questions. <laughs> Make sure you read this right. And you could of course read the privacy policy if you want, but let's be honest, no one actually does that. And it's important to remember that this is gonna be the username that's visible to everyone. So if you're gonna be lead hacks or, you know, just be cognizant of that. So I've already created a account in the past, so I'm just going to slightly modify what I do. Let's do Hoid with three Ds. And it appears there's a couple of restrictions. Ah, uh, yes, uh, you don't want to capitalize the first character. So let's try that again. And now you want to set a password. Uh, remember, this is a hacking website, so it's pretty likely that someone might try to hack your real account on the game at some point. So you probably want to use a pretty secure password. 
Now, it'll ask you about resets via email. I strongly encourage you to do this in case you do forget your password and you wanna recover it. So uh, you can do that. I'm not gonna do it in this circumstances since it's just a throwaway account. Now, here we have the first part of the game, really. You have mail, that nice little welcome. So I guess the first thing we should try to do is check our mail. Now you gotta remember, this is not Gmail that you're used to. This is a much older version of email. So we can type the mail command and that should give us this little screen. Think of it like your welcome page on Gmail. So we have one message from Forbin. Welcome to Telehack. That sounds interesting. Let's check that out. So we're going to use read one to read the email. And then one is the number of the email that we want to read. So you see the in one. So it, we would use two, three, whatever. Okay, let's see. We got some information about our account here to Hoyd. Thank you for checking out Telehack. You can get started by reading telehack.txt. Hmm, maybe we should do that first. Get a little more information about what we're doing here. So you can see the and abbreviation terminal prompt. So that means we're in the mail system still. So to exit that, we need to just type exit. And now we are at our original terminal. And look at that, we even got a little achievement. Postmaster, super elite hackser, we checked some email. So let's go ahead and see what's going on in our root directory here. Oh, it looks like we got a bunch of text files and some executables even. I'm gonna go ahead and follow the suggestion of the email and read the intro text telehack. Let's see where that is. So for any of the text documents, we can use the more command and then the name of the document that we want to read. In this case, telehack.txt. Now, obviously we're only 4% of the way through this. So to scroll down, you can use the return or enter key to scroll down one line at a time, but that's gonna be pretty slow. We're already only 6%. So to page down, you can use the space bar. And obviously that's gonna show you a lot more information at a time. If you need to go back a page, you can use the B key and scroll back, then spacebar to go back forward. And I'm not gonna read all this right now, but if you were starting the game, this is a lot of very useful information about things like what to do when you get stuck, uh, control characters, all the terminal commands that you might need. So I highly suggest reading this if you do really start getting into Telehack. So I'm just gonna keep paging down so I get to the end and it should, there we go. We're at the end of the document. Definitely check out that YouTube URL if you ever want a little Easter egg. Now to exit, you'll wanna press Control C and that'll exit out of your document when you're done reading it. Now, if you're at all competitive and you wanna play this game somewhat competitively, then you might wanna know how to check your score. To do that, you can spy and check on the other users by using the finger command, which will show all kinds of interesting information. So let's go ahead and check that out. So here we have a bunch of users, their status, uh, last time they were on and what they were doing and a general area of where they are. And this is actually real locations of where these players are. Uh, obviously they might be using a VPN or something, so it might be a little off, but this should be fairly representative of where these people actually are in the world. 
as you can see, there's a lot of people from various parts of the United States, but there are a fair amount of people from around the world. Some people from the UK, Canada, who else do we have here? Pakistan, Germany, Poland. So you can definitely have an opportunity to interact with people from all over the world. Let's even page down. Oh, we got uh, Armenia, Romania. Definitely a lot of European countries going on here. Now, if I wanted to see more information about a particular user, I can use the finger command and then follow that up with a username. Let's just do this guy because it's a really short name. So here we have a bunch of status information, what level he is, and one of the real scoring metrics in this game is how many systems you have super user access on. Uh, so this guy, he's got 17 systems, not too bad. Uh, he's been playing for two and a half years. So definitely people seem to enjoy this. And then down below it, we can see all those systems that he has the root access on and when he got it. Now, those systems, they actually act sort of like capture the flag style of event, right? So only one person can have root access to a system at a time. So if you gain access and then someone comes along and then hacks that system, you're going to lose that flag. So it's a nice little thing to do. Go around collecting all these networks and then uh, lock them down. Do whatever you can to secure them. And we'll get into that a little later. Now, speaking of that, let's go ahead and cover how to connect to other computers on the ARPANET. You gotta understand the ARPANET is not the internet. It is the precursor to the internet in many ways. However, it's not bridged. So you only have point to point connection. So I can only connect to a server that is directly linked to me. I can't hop through that server directly to another server that it's connected to. I can pivot through it, but ARPNET isn't designed to show me every system on the entire network at once. So I have to manually go through systems and use those to hop to other systems. So type the netstat command and that should show us those networks immediately available to us. So typically you're going to see somewhere between like eight and 12 systems. And this I'm not 100% sure on, but does seem to be reflective of the geographic area you're in. So for example, what I was seeing over on the East Coast is vastly different from the ones I'm seeing on the West Coast. So it makes it fun, especially if you're going to decide to play this game with friends, or if you're traveling around a little, it might even alter the systems that you're doing dynamically. Now, you might be surprised to discover that all of these systems are typically going to have guest user accounts. Now, back in the 1980s, it was considered a common courtesy to leave a guest user account for other people that may be using the ARP your system to access the ARPnet and access other systems on the network. Now, obviously that's a potential security flaw, but like I said before, they weren't really considering that. And like, you gotta imagine for years, computers were only accessible to wealthy universities. So that's why you see a lot of universities on here, like University of Maryland here and University of Chicago. So we're gonna take advantage of those guest user accounts by telnetting into one of these servers. So let's go ahead and access the University of Maryland College Park. To do that, we're going to telnet and then the host name. So M-I-M-S-Y. Hmm, let's try that again. I actually timed out. Maybe my internet's too slow here in the middle of nowhere. Okay, that's better. Here we are. So it's gonna ask for a username. And as I said, it's courtesy. So just put in guest. Now, as you'll see, you'll have a little greeting screen whenever you access a new system. And you'll have some information about the 
num the routing numbers, the IPs, and also down under exetc slash MOTD, you'll see a note about who has root on this system. Now, obviously, if you're like me, competitive, you wanna see your name down there. So how do we get that? Well, to start, of course, you can explore your environment, use the normal Linux commands like ls, to see what's in your root directory and cd around to folders. Now, what's interesting to note is that each system is going to have unique text and executable files. Uh, these are legitimate text files from back in the day, but some of these executable files are simplified or stylistic versions of real hacking tools. So let's see what we have in here. It seems we don't really have, we have one executable, but we don't know what it does right now. So instead, let's just go with the basic hack attack that we have in this game, which is the port hack 2.0. To use it, we simply run port hack. Actually, we may have to run the port hack from the default terminal. So let's go back there, exit this connection, and then run port hack. Okay, yeah. Here we go, yes to continue. And then we enter the host, which was mi msy. And we're gonna probe it for open sockets, open ports, and see what we got. Oh, it looks like we got an FTP server, some Telnet, which is what we were just connected to, and some other stuff. So, in this game, we can just try various ports, and it seems that it'll randomly assign one of those ports to be vulnerable. Uh, now, that's obviously not the most realistic, but it is pretty common that back in the day, one of these ports would have been vulnerable to the port hack. Now port hack, if I understand it correctly, is just doing some kind of buffer overflow attack. But we can play script kitty here, just run the script and just start typing in ports. So I'll just start from the top, port 21. Oh, it doesn't seem it was successful. So we'll just keep going down. In the context of this game, we know that at least one of these is going to be vulnerable. Oh, and there it is. We compromised the system. It was the second to last port, 439. Now we're installing some malicious software, the loop jacker, and we've added our own account to the system. So now we'll be able to go to this university's system and log in with our own personal credentials and have escalated privileges above that of the guest user. So let's tell that in again. Be mindful of your spelling. Tell. And now we should be able to log in with our username and password that we set before. And here we go, we got access. And so now we should have access to much more stuff that's on the network and potentially uh, better executables and other files. Now, let's say we did want to steal one of these files like 19076. Maybe that's a really interesting text file. Maybe we wanted to steal one of the executables um, and in fact, that's something you want to do in this game. You want to go around and hack all the systems you can so that you can collect all these executables, which tend to be worms or other malicious software that you can add to your tool belt and use to hack yet more systems. So to do that, we're actually going to need to access the FTP server. So I'm going to exit the Telnet and then FTP into the system and there we go automatically logged in with the normal level user access account that I gave myself with the port hack now that we added our credentials in 
and got the FTP prompt, we can start exfiltrating files. We can again use ls to look around and see what files are available for us, and then use the git file or git command. So git and then the name of the file. So here I'm just going to do the first one for an example, 19076.txt. And now you can see the file is downloading, albeit a little slowly, uh, but mind you for the time, this would have been incredibly fast to have kilobit speeds. Now, if we wanted to, we could also add files to this FTP server with the put command. So for example, we could upload the port hack with put port hack.exe. And this is really important as you're playing the game, you want to be taking your tools around to the new systems with you. So it's important to have the port hack as that's like your most basic attack. So by having it on this system, I can now use this university system to pivot into other networks that I might not be able to see from my personal system. Now, once I've done that and it's put there, I can go ahead and exit the FTP server with exit. And now if I were to log back in with Telnet, I should see my port hack there, and then I can start going on and you should get the basics, uh, continue out and spread out throughout the country and the systems available. Now that's just the basic hacks, but if you want more of an objective uh, and you aren't just comfortable being in a sandbox environment, you can actually start your own hacker quest and it's actually really easy, you just type the quest command. Now, when you run this for the first time, it'll have this nice little screen and it's going to prepare a unique challenge for you. And from what I, guess, what, from what I understand, it's just choosing a bunch of random servers and files and different objectives for you to run uh, with and have some goals so that way you're not just aimlessly wandering around these networks which I mean is fun, it's fun to go around and read a bunch of these random text files from the 80s, but sometimes it's a little nicer to have kind of a vision for what you're doing. And so my challenge is hack your way to the host and get a very particular file and then read this file and that'll give me information to continue on my quest. And that's really all you need to get started with Telehack. I hope you find this at least somewhat enjoyable Telehack is an amazing game, however, it's just that, it's just a game. So it's fun to learn some basic Linux commands and explore the ARPNET. However, that 1980s and 1990s setting means it's limited use for actually learning to hack in 2020. Now, if you are interested in other games like this or capture the flag type events, you can let me know by messaging me at the underscore Hoyd on Twitter or commenting below. If you get a little lost or you need some of the links, don't forget to check the link to the article in the description below and like, comment, and subscribe. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next episode of Cyber Weapons Lab.